Now that we've established the basic ideas underlying economic analysis of a competitive market, we're prepared to discuss the effects of an excise tax imposed on the market. Let's assume that the government imposes the statutory incidence or legal liability of the tax on the demand side of the market, that is, on consumers. Imagine that you go into a retail store to purchase an item on which the excise tax is imposed. The sales clerk rings up your purchase and you pay for the item. The clerk bags your purchase and hands your receipt to you. However, before you walk away from the counter, the taxman pops up from behind the counter and tells you that you must pay the tax. Obviously, in the real world, this never happens. However, this is the easiest scenario to illustrate government imposing the statutory incidence of a tax on the demand side of a market. Economists depict the imposition of the tax on the demand side of the market by a shift of the demand curve downward. The difference between the original demand curve and the demand curve indicating the tax is the same all along the length of the curve. In other words, since this is an excise tax imposed on each unit of the item, the amount of the tax reduces demand at all points along the demand curve. Let's assume, for the sake of illustration, that the amount of the tax is $3 per unit. Notice that the new demand curve intersects the supply curve at a new point, indicating one effect of the tax. It decreases the level of output in the market. Let's say the level of output is reduced from 6 to 4. It also creates a new effective price point for us to consider, the effective price confronted by consumers indicated here as P subscript C. We also observe the effective price confronted by suppliers, denoted here as P subscript S. Notice that the difference between the effective price confronted by consumers and that realized by suppliers, P subscript C, minus P subscript S is the amount of the tax in our hypothetical example, $3. How can we determine the revenue to government generated by this tax? We simply multiply the total output in the market with the tax indicated as Q subscript tax by the per unit amount of the tax, $3. In our hypothetical market, that would be $3 times the quantity 4, so tax revenue to government generated by this hypothetical excise tax is $12. Next, we can inquire about the distribution of the tax burden. Specifically, what is the portion of the tax borne by the consumer? This is indicated by the difference between the effective price confronted by the consumer, P subscript C, which is $9.50, and the original equilibrium price, P subscript E, which is $8, multiplied by the output in the taxed market, indicated as Q subscript tax, which is 4. So $9.50 minus $8 equals $1.50 times the quantity 4, which is $6. Consumers bear $6 of the total burden of this tax. Graphically, this is depicted as the shaded rectangle PC, PE, C, B. What is the portion of the tax borne by suppliers or sellers? This is indicated by the difference between the equilibrium price PE, which is $8, and the effective price realized by suppliers, PS, which is $6.50, multiplied by the output in the taxed market, Q subscript tax, 
which is 4. So $8 minus $6.50 is $1.50 times the quantity 4 equals $6. Suppliers or sellers, in other words, also bear $6 of the total $12 burden of this tax. Graphically, this is depicted by the lower unshaded rectangle P subscript E, P subscript S, D, C. So what we are saying then is that in our hypothetical market, buyers and sellers equally bear the economic incidence of this tax, despite the fact that the statutory incidence was imposed on consumers. More generally, it gives us our first indication that the economic incidence of a tax, or a portion of the economic incidence, may be shifted away from the entity that bears the legal liability of remitting the tax revenue to government. Now let's see what happens if government imposes the statutory incidence of the tax on the supply side of the market.